Two of Anubica's Take 10 review of OVD Enterprise 3.0. I'm Edward Adlers along with Alex Perkins. And in our first half, we covered the first three new features in OVD Enterprise 3.0. We covered resource container, hybrid Active Directory integration, and user shadowing. And if you're watching for the first time, you can read more about these features by visiting anubica.com slash what's underscore new. And don't forget to watch part one of this Take 10 episode to see them in action. So let's bring in Alex and continue with the next feature. It's a simple one, but it's also a popular addition that has a big impact on user productivity, and that is multi-monitor support for app mode. So Alex, what type of user will benefit the most from this new feature? So um, as before, um, it, it benefits users that are using Windows applications. Um, we support historically uh, multi-monitor across um, only Windows for the enterprise desktop client. Um, so this adds additional functionality across all the operating systems we support and also further enhances it to allowing app mode um, across multiple monitors too. Um, so now you've got your, your desktop mode either via the web client or the desktop client which can span across multiple monitors. You've got portal mode uh, on the web client, which again could be spanned across multiple monitors. But now with the addition of app mode across multiple monitors, it further enhances the way that users can interact with those applications. Um, so now you can have, you know, let's say three applications, you can have one on each individual monitor, whereas before they would have all been contained onto your primary screen. Um, this creates ultimately a natural extension to sort of that, that virtual uh, and local app synergy and that seamless delivery of the, of, of the way that we, we deliver applications side by side with what's available on your local machine. And um, from a Mac perspective, we're still the only people in the market that can do this. Uh, and especially across multiple monitors, we're, we're further enhancing that offering. Now for our viewers who are not familiar with what app mode is, app mode basically sends your applications and integrates them onto your own local Mac, Windows, or Linux desktop. And they really do look and feel like they're part of your local device. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it, it's a, it's a truly seamless experience um, between what's available locally and what's available in OBD, right down to the point that we integrate into the start menu or the, the launch panel launcher, depending on your operating system too. You also get file system integration, so you can double click a file on your desktop and it will just load the application in a window that you've asked for, just as it would be on your local machine. And multi-monitor in app mode is really simple to use. Uh, OVD's dynamic adjustment capability will automatically detect the presence of additional monitors when you connect them and instantly make them available for use in app mode. And from there, it's, it's a simple case of moving active application windows into whichever monitor position you prefer. It's that, it's that simple. Let's move on now to service notices. And service notices builds on the previously released OVD messaging feature in, in our last version uh, to provide a more comprehensive set of options for communicating with the OVD user community. And in this case, service notices is really designed to broadcast general announcements to users before they start an OVD session. Alex, what are some of the use cases for service notices? So service notices has many different uses. Um, it can be used for something as simple as a legal disclaimer. You can use it for a maintenance announcement. Um, it can be a link to important resources as it supports rich text formatting. So you can put hyperlinks in there, images and so on. Um, and the, the main premise is, is to be able to dis display information to your users before they log in. Whereas we've got you know, our fantastic messaging functionality that allows you to send a message in session to a user, you've never been able to send a message um, to users that haven't actually initiated a session. And we've, we've ported this functionality across all of the um, clients we support too. So it supports the web client, it supports the desktop client, and it also supports the mobile client as well. 
um, and it's it's equally configurable on a tenant basis. So you've got real flexibility in what you're displaying. So for, for those in a hosted environment, you don't have to display the same service notice to all of your tenants. You can display it just to one tenant that you're putting into maintenance mode, for example. Now, from a functionality perspective, it's just as easy as anything else in OBD to configure. We go into the system tab, we go into service notices. In this box here, we can configure um, what the um, service notice is going to say. We have three different levels to choose from. Warning makes it yellow, normal makes it uh, just the sort of standard uh, background list approach. So if I, if I show you here on this tab, currently there is no service notice displayed for this user. But if I go back here, if we enable the service notice, I go back here and I refresh that page, you'll now see that the um, service notice has appeared in the red formatting because we've chosen warning. The hyperlink is available. I've just set this to go through to Google, for example, but this can go to anything. It could go to an internal page, external page. It could pop out a document or stored on a network share, for example. Um, and then you know, just as easily, we can go and disable that functionality, refresh the page, and it's gone. Um, so it is as simple as that to implement. Finally, and I think we're saving really the best for last, is the single perhaps, Alex, you'd agree, the single most commonly requested feature out of all of our customer requests, and that is integrated two-factor authentication. Now, we should point out that OVD Enterprise has always, um, uh, previous versions have supported external SAML2-based services, um, but we most notably work with partners like WatchGuard and Duo, for example. Uh, but demand for an internal solution um, was, was, was always growing. Um, Alex, for the viewer out there who may not be as familiar with 2FA, uh, what role does it play and, and what value does it bring to OVD Enterprise users? So um, 2FA, as you say, it's a very commonly requested feature and we've taken it to another level uh, with how we're doing it in OVD. Now, OVD is security focused. It is, it is based on being secured by design. So what we've done is rather than take uh, sort of a more open open approach on the 2FA. We've made it native, we've made it integrated, and we've we've made it locked down as well. So it uses the Anubica Authenticator app on a mobile device, and that's available for both Android and iOS. So from that perspective, you can only authenticate to OVD if you're using two-factor, if you're using an Anubica application. So you, you're further enhancing the, the security of the session. Now, from an administrator's perspective, it means that your users will, have, will be using a one-time passcode to, to further secure their login process. But we've also thought about the simplicity of that too, because in, in secured buildings where you're already coming in from a secured location, for example, you might not want to have two-factor authentication enabled. So we can disable 2FA for specific network ranges, but as with everything in OBD, you can also granulize this. So this can be configured for the user and the user group too. Um, so lots of different flexibility on that front, but it, it opens up a whole new world of, of the um, security possibilities for the implementation of OBD without having to go out to an external provider um, to further harden it. Okay. And so as you mentioned, in order to make this work, we, we've released our own two-factor authentication companion app for iOS and, and Android devices. The two need to work hand in hand. Uh, and uh, again, following our theme of simplicity, setup is remarkably uh, easy. So let's take a look. Um, how, does this, uh, how does this work? How do you set it up? And then how do you actually use the two uh, together? Okay, so back to the administration console again, we're gonna go users authentication settings. At the bottom, you'll see there's this new section called two-factor authentication status. So from here, uh, out of the box, it is set to disabled. We have a choice of enabled, which means it's turned on, but it isn't compulsory. Or you have enforced, which means everyone has to be enrolled in 2FA in order to log in. If they're not at the next login, they will be prompted to. Uh, here we have the ability for that whitelisting. Uh, so we're saying about network ranges that we can include that 2FA will not be applied from. Uh, and again, you can set that for the user and the group basis too, as you may not want this applied to all different users. And um, another thing which we'll be talking about in a moment is password change, uh, but I'll, I'll, save, I'll save the explanation for that. Uh, but basically it's whether you want it enabled or disabled. So if we look back at my users, if I look at this A Stroud user here, now I've configured two-factor for this user already. From an administrator perspective, 
we can reset the two factor. Um, so if the user has forgotten um, their um, backup code, they've got a new device and they haven't reconfigured it um, before they before they changed over, for example, you can reset it as an admin and allow them to re-enroll in two factor very, very easily. So putting this into practice, if I go and log in here as that user, we'll hit connect. You'll now see that it's going to prompt me for a two-factor authentication code. Now I'm going to take my mobile device here. I'm going to load up the Anubica Authenticator app. I'm going to get the one-time pin out and hit verify. And then you'll see it's going to initialize the session just as it would in a standard setup. So you see now we've logged in and now we can use OVD uh, in the same way that we would before. It's exactly the same if you're using the mobile client or the desktop client, it will pop up with the request for the one-time pin. Now, if the user has forgotten um, their device and they've got their backup codes available, if I just go and log in again here, you see we have more options. So we can choose a backup code in this case. So then we can use a backup code, which is generated in the um, uh, enrollment process, paste that in, and again, we can log in. We also have a new security settings um, page. And from here, this is where users can control both their password management and their two-factor authentication enrollment. So if I go and log in again, and much like um, the other parts of OVD, this is also two-factor enforced. So we can go and put our pin in. We can also use a backup code as well. And now you'll see I've logged in from here. I can change my password. This is also supported for Active Directory 2 and LDAP. Um, and then at the bottom, we have uh, the notification that two-factor is enabled. So from here, I can disable it. I can also go and generate new backup codes. If I go and hit disable, it's now ready for me to re-enroll. So I can go and hit enable. As it says here, you'll need your smartphone. You're going to need the Anuvica Authenticator mobile app. We'd hit continue. We'd load the Anuvica Authenticator app on our phone, click the plus, scan the QR code. It will give us a verification code which we can then uh, re-register. We'll just do that quickly here. We'll hit finish. We'll get that new authentication code. We'll hit verify. We get our backup codes. These are only shown once. So we still, we have to um, securely store those, either print them, save them, whatever you wish to do with them. We hit finish and two-factor is re-enabled. But it really is as simple as that to, to configure two-factor inside OVD. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about the security portal and the password expiry detection features. Sure. So if I switch back to the administration console here, we see the status is currently valid. Now, um, I can hit for, force user password change, and it puts that into expired. Expired is treated the same if you're using Active Directory and you're setting password expiry policies, um, or if you've done it in LDAP too. And next time the user tries to log in with that expired password, so if I go and try and log in here as my A Stroud user, it's going to ask me for my two-factor. We'll hit verify, but it now is notifying me that I need to change my password. So we're going to hit change password. It's going to take us through to the security portal, which we have to authenticate again uh, for enhanced security. And at the top, it says here, my password has expired. I need to set a new one before I can proceed. So we'll pop the new, the old password in, and then we'll set a new password. And as simple as that, the password is changed. Now, that is also fully supported in LDAP and Active Directory too. So this has been something that we've been asked for many times um, to further enhance how help desks are dealing uh, with password reset queries and expiration notices, because it takes up a huge amount of time. Um, for, for customers' um, help desks. So now users can manage their own passwords. They can reset their password or change their password at their, at their beck and call um, without having to call the help desk and uh, saving uh, the support ticket for someone else. And that just about does it for our review of the new features in OVD Enterprise 3.0. You can learn more about what you've seen today by visiting anuvica.com slash what's new. And if you'd like to try OVD Enterprise for yourself, simply request a free trial at anuvica.com slash free trial. Stay tuned for more episodes of Anuvica Take 10, but until then, thanks for watching.